I'm sure there are as many reasons for collecting as there are collectors, but for book collectors there is the intrinsic quality of the writing to justify the need to acquire. I like to think that my Arthur Macken collection is a working library, although the reasons for having more than one copy of a particular book are not always easy to explain. When it comes to Arthur Macken, the Welsh novelist, short story writer and essayist, I defend my interest on the grounds that he was a supreme stylist. Born in 1863, he died in 1947, and he's often read for his tales of horror and the supernatural, although his work is predominantly of a mystical cast. He believed that there was a veil between this world and another reality which was, depending on his mood, either horrifically wonderful or wonderfully horrific. It is possible to pick up most of Macken's key texts affordably, and in some very good editions. This is a recent Centipede Press edition, an Oxford classic, and Macken as a Penguin Modern classic. And book dealers now seem to be asking a premium for mass market editions from the 1960s. The collecting gods are not on anyone's side when it comes to obtaining his very first publication, Eleusinia. Even the most assiduous collectors, even the wealthiest, rely on this elegant facsimile edition published by the Friends of Arthur Macken in 2013. It was originally privately printed by Joseph Jones in Hereford in 1881 as a 16-page pamphlet without covers. Only one is known for sure to exist, in Yale University Library. It had been previously reprinted in a Necronomicon Press edition, and in the 1960s as an Arthur Macken Society Occasional number no. 2. Macken's second book was The Anatomy of Tobacco, published in 1884. Copies are not rare, and the value depends on their condition. Most have darkened and marked vellum covers. This particular copy was inscribed for Walter Parker by Macken in Amersham in 1929, but Macken notes that it was written at 23 Clarendon Road, Notting Hill Gate, in the year 1883. Far more rare are the book catalogues that Macken compiled for George Redway, also in the 1880s. The literature of occultism and archaeology dates from 1885, and there appear to have been two or three variants of this, although all are called part one. Macken's next book was a translation, The Heptameron by Queen Margaret of Navarre, privately printed by the Dryden Press in London in 1886. It was originally published in grey boards with a cream paper spine and a paper label, but the binding does not survive, and it is a book that is always rebound and has a value based on the quality of the rebinding, this copy, mine, is an oddity. The sheets are as the first edition, but it has no illustrations, and it doesn't appear in Goldson and Sweetser's bibliography. The next item is another catalogue prepared by Macken for George Redway. The list of books from the library of Frederick Hockley, and it came out in 1887. It is incredibly fragile, and the brown printing on discoloured paper isn't easy to read. Don Quixote de la Mancha also prepared for George Redway, is a piece of fiction by Macken, listing the books from Don Quixote's library. It is a curiosity because the bibliographers obviously saw a copy just like this, an untrimmed pamphlet. I later bought a copy that was trimmed and had obviously been sewn. I re-sewed this copy using the original holes and later discovered that it was always intended to be placed in the back of A. E. Waite's A Handbook of Cartomancy, Macken's bibliographers say with some authority that Don Quixote de la Mancha was published probably in July 1887, but I'm not sure that that shouldn't be revised to 1889 to reflect the publication date of the Handbook of Cartomancy. The Chronicle of Clemendy published by Macken himself under his Carbonek imprint in 1888, is his first full-length book of fiction. There were 250 numbered copies, 
with blue-grey boards, a parchment spine, lettered in gilt, with raised bands, and a frontispiece. My copy has a nice letter to the editor of the Academy from Macken saying that he is sending a copy of the prospectus for the book. The editor obviously put the book and the letter together. The Chronicle of Clemendy was reprinted in 1923 under the same imprint in America, and in 1925-26 Martin Secker issued a trade edition in a jacket. This was Max Beerbohm's copy and comes, oddly enough, from Macken's own books. There was also a limited edition of a hundred signed large paper copies, which means very large margins. The typesetting is the same. But my favourite copy of the Chronicle of Clemendy, despite the damp stains, comes from Sylvia Townsend Warner's library. It has her Frome Valchurch address on the Ex Libri label. And then we move on to another catalogue, Thesaurus Incantatus, printed for Thomas Marvel, which was actually Macken and his good friend Harry Spur. It's undated, but was issued in 1888. My copy is incredibly fragile. And then we move to Fantastic Tales, privately printed in 1889-1890. This is the large paper issue, limited to 50 signed, numbered copies. And this is the smaller issue, limited to 500 numbered copies. It's a translation from a mildly pornographic work by Beroald de Verville, and it was originally set up in print as The Way to Attain, but the printers thought it too rude and stopped the typesetting. This 500 copy edition simply has a number. But the larger paper issue is rather more sumptuous. Mine has the original prospectus bound into it. And it has Arthur Macken's signature. This copy has an additional authorial inscription and a letter to the previous owner of the book, presumably the man who bought it, from Macken's own address at North End House, and it's dated by Macken, 1893. Fantastic Tales was reprinted in 1923, at the height of the Macken boom in the US, in an edition of 1,050 numbered and signed copies. And this then moves us firmly into the 1890s, which was arguably Arthur Macken's most productive and creative decade, and will be covered in the second part of this video. For the moment, I'll finish with Macken's translation of the memoirs of Casanova, which were originally published in 12 volumes in 1894. But I'm not a completist, and I was pleased enough to put together this reprint set of six published by Ellick.